And this is a significant development we are getting to you now from the Salman Khan hit and run case. Now, the crucial question, did the crane that lifted the Salman Khan's car, in fact, crush the deceased? There are, in fact, a different versions emerging now on that story. We'll have Kajal with us who will uh, get us through what really happened in the court. But, in fact, the defense has pleaded in the final argument, citing the post-mortem report of the crushed chest and the hair of the victim and how, in these circumstances, he couldn't have screamed as reported uh, by the witnesses to say that the victim was crushed perhaps by a heavier uh, object. Kajal with us. Now, Kajal, what really happened now? Is, is there a new theory now in this entire case? Well, that seems to be one of the th uh, th new twists that the defense seems to have brought. You know, remember, the entire thrust of the evidence today, the final arguments today, was to try and prove that Salman Khan's uh, uh, car was not the cause of the death of the laborer, which means that the charge of culpable homicide under which this particular retrial has been ordered will not be uh, taken, uh, will, try, uh, will be destroyed. That is the aim of the defense today. They try to suggest uh, that the car did not cause the death of the, uh, of the uh, deceased Nurul, one of the laborers who died during this incident. But instead, when the car was lifted by the cranes uh, that were brought by the uh, cops, and even one of the cops had admitted that the car was dropped briefly after the crane lifted it. So this dropping could have possibly caused uh, the uh, death of Nurullah. That is what the defense tried to tell the court today as part of the final argument that they have today. All right, Kajal, for the moment, many thanks for getting us those details.